Hello, thank you for joining me for From Tweet to Bad Idea, Creating an Embeddable Kubernetes Style API Server. My name is Jason DeTiberos. I am at Equinix Metal, and I am working to bring cloud native infrastructure management into the data center. Um, I am also one of the co-maintainers for the Cluster API project, and you can generally find me on Twitter at DTiber. So um, going back to Twitter is how this all started. Um, I put out a call uh, asking if anybody uh, thought it would be possible to go ahead and uh, build this idea of a minimal Kubernetes style API server that supports CRDs. And that took me down quite a bit of a rabbit hole. Um, but why would I want to chase this rabbit hole? Um, well, uh, because CRDs actually give you a lot to be able to build out applications pretty quickly to provide a lot of value. Um, for example, CRDs uh, give you out of the box data persistence, versioning semantics, defaulting, validation, and clients. And those clients don't just support CRUD applications, they also give you the same list watch type semantics that uh, Kubernetes itself does. However, CRDs also come with um, uh, a pretty steep cost for certain types of applications because it brings a dependency on Kubernetes. Now, for most things, that's not generally too bad because um, you're generally deploying applications on infrastructure that already exists, things like that. But what if you're building applications that manage that underlying infrastructure? Um, for example, in the Cluster API project, we work around that today uh, by having the ability to use uh, kind of an ephemeral bootstrap cluster uh, to be able to stand up the Cluster API managed infrastructure and then kind of move those resources over to that cluster that you just created. Now, that works okay for cluster API, but what if you're trying to get something even deeper down in the infrastructure? For example, automating uh, bare metal infrastructure in the data center, uh, like the Tinkerbell project, which is a CNCF sandbox project. Well, you got a chicken and egg there that is very difficult to kind of resolve. So is there a way to leverage CRDs in that type of environment? Well, this rabbit hole got me doing a lot of research. You know, has somebody already done this? You know, there's been kind of rumblings back and forth between people in the community about whether or not um, this is something that could be possible. You know, people talking about potentially doing it. Uh, Tim Hawking was talking about uh, this back in 2018 about trying to move more Kubernetes resources themselves towards CRDs versus uh, being built in types and, and things like that. Um, so what is the current state? Um, well, I, I started prototyping it out a little bit and it took me about three days to get to the first POC of this and it worked okay. Uh, there were some uh, challenges there, but uh, it seems at least from this point, to be possible. So before we get more into that, you know, what is the goal um, that I'm trying to solve? Well, uh, to begin with, you know, like I said, uh, want to be able to build a minimal API server capable of supporting CRDs, but I would also like that to be able to be embedded into the application itself so that you don't have that external dependency on uh, another system to be running in advance of this system coming up. Um, the other thing is, is uh, I wanted to be able to avoid exposing all of the uh, command line arguments that the Kubernetes components themselves do, uh, because they may not make a lot of sense uh, if you're trying to stand up an application that isn't Kubernetes itself. I also wanted to try to avoid needing to do any crazy vendor management or having to import directly from Kubernetes, Kubernetes, because that creates a lot of maintenance burden and you know there's a lot of version lockstepping that you have to do. Um, additionally, I want to try to avoid, wherever possible, reinventing any new um, unnecessary wheels. I, I don't want to recreate the existing functionality of Kubernetes where it's not absolutely needed. Um, I would like to be able to leverage the actual community code wherever possible. Um, I'd also like to avoid exposing unnecessary ports. You know, there's there's no reason why um, an application would need to expose things that are only used internally. So can we uh, take advantage of uh, some features to avoid having to expose 
many different ports and talking back to each other on open public ports. And the other thing is, is I want to be able to support standalone and what I'm calling bootstrapping use cases. Uh, so being able to solve that chicken and egg scenario of managing infrastructure before that infrastructure um, already exists. And what about the existing tooling? So uh, if you look at some of the existing tooling in the space, it generally falls into several different categories. Uh, the first one's API aggregation. And uh, generally right now, the most mature project for that is a simple API server, um, kind of like API server the hard way. Um, you basically have to create everything from scratch. And that seems very painful maintenance wise. And it also doesn't actually give me the uh, capability of being able to run CRDs using it. Um, there's also a new and upcoming project, uh, API Server Builder Alpha, which is trying to do for uh, API aggregation what the Kubler project has done for building CRD-based projects. Um, that also brings into the same kind of deal is that um, it's meant for building aggregated API servers, and I really want to be able to leverage the functionality of CREs rather than uh, API aggregation. And then there's the CRD-based tooling, uh, you know, QBuilder and the related projects. And those are great for building CRD-based applications that have an external dependency on Kubernetes, maybe not necessarily for trying to, you know, uh, do the embedded Zion model that I have. Um, hopefully, um, my thought is, is you would still be able to rely on these tools in addition to um, a new project to sit there and provide the full functionality for this. So we don't expect, I don't expect to be recreating the functionality that exists with the CRD-based tooling. And then why not just use the underlying libraries? Like I said, I don't want to reinvent unnecessary wheels um, so I started getting into the cube uh, aggregator and uh, API extensions, API server projects, and try to see, you know, whether I could just use those directly and port them in for a project. And what I found is that in general, there's a lot of overly ver verbose and replicated configuration between different components that you have to pass along. Um, they're also right now very highly tied into Cobra. And if you use the commands directly, uh, it automatically exposes all of the command line arguments from Kubernetes. And quite a bit of the functionality for actually tying together the extensions API server and the aggregation server right now actually lives in Kubernetes, Kubernetes itself. And trying to import that in and use that directly uh, not only creates that dependency on uh, the main Kubernetes repo uh, and all of the dependency management challenges that involves, um, but it also brings in all of the functionality and dependencies of uh, Cube API server. And I would like to be able to expose something much more minimal and easier to configure. And the other one is, is that it's quite difficult to actually correctly wire them up properly. Um, like I said, these are tied into command line arguments. So there's a layer of command line config that goes into options that then needs to be chained through several different ways. And, and the components are kind of glued together at various different points of that um, configuration chain. Uh, so trying to correctly wire them all up together is actually quite error prone today outside of the main repository. So what exactly would the standalone use case look like? Well, in this, in this simple use case, uh, my thought is, is you would have uh, your own application uh, providing its own, you know, services for whatever uh, you're trying to do. Uh, you'd be able to embed in kind of what's currently uh, this bad idea project. And uh, you can leverage the existing Kubernetes clients and tooling uh, to interact with that application how you need to. So let's take a look at that in a bit more depth. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to take advantage of two different repositories, uh, both under the 
GitHub organization, the Tire Fire. I created this GitHub organization uh, basically as a joke uh, because I didn't know exactly if this idea was going to have legs or not. And the core library that I'm going to be using today is under the Bad Idea Repository. And the example uh, application that I've started to create that actually embeds the Bad Idea API server is just example right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at that code. Um, I'm not going to dive too much into the Bad Idea repository right now, uh, but let's dig into the example a little bit. So if we come in here, uh, just look at the dependencies that we're bringing in right now, um, we can see that uh, I am importing um, bad idea. And um, outside of that, I'm importing very little from the other Kubernetes repositories. I am importing controller runtime here because I built this project out using the QBuilder scaffolding uh, for the CRD resources and the controllers. Um, and I did have to pull in API machinery and client go. Um, right now I did have to make sure that the controller runtime version is uh, synced up with the um, API server version that Bad Idea is using. Um, I don't expect there's gonna be too much that we can do to break that just because of the way that all of the individual Kubernetes components uh, work today. Um, and I did run into one initial issue with um, transitive dependencies that I'm having to work around not right now with this replace uh, because uh, pulling in controller runtime right now is uh, forcing or trying to pull in a newer version of uh, Gnostic here. And uh, this replace is helping uh, use the older version that's required by uh, the API machinery right now. Um, there are some PRs in place and some work being done upstream to uh, resolve these issues. And once that's uh, resolved, I should be able to remove this replace. So what does this application actually look like? Um, I'm going to warn you that this is uh, very much an initial POC, so it is uh, a little bit rough at this point. Um, but if I come in here, um, we can see... Um, here in the main function, uh, it looks very much just like a normal um, QBuilder based uh, application. Um, I'm creating uh, basically the uh, signal handler to be able to handle cleaning up of the resources. Um, I'm spawning off the uh, bad idea server. Um, and this is doing a lot of legwork uh, behind the scenes for me. This is actually going to spin up the uh, embedded etcd instance it's going to stand up the uh, api aggregator and it's also going to stand up the uh, crd server uh, once this project gets a little bit further along and implement some of the core resources uh, it'll also stand up uh, the uh, necessary components to be able to handle that as well um, and then at that point i'm uh, creating a uh, client configuration into that bad idea server and if I go up there to that real quick, all I'm doing here is basically generating uh, kind of uh, a very basic rudimentary cube config. Um, the server, I know it's going to be coming up on localhost uh, port 6443. Um, it's going to automatically generate the certs the first time you create this, similar to how the Kubernetes uh, API machinery does. Um, so because of that, I'm setting uh, insecure skip TLS verify so that uh, we don't end up with any certificate errors. And um, I'm also configuring things right now to use the uh, allow all uh, authentication policy. Um, so I do need to set a username and a password here to make the client tooling happy. It's actually going to ignore that and just allow it anyway uh, as an unauthenticated request. And then I'm gonna put that together in the cube config. And with that cube config, I'm then generating a rest config. Um, and here's where things get a little hacky right now. Um, but as soon as what I'm doing here is I'm basically waiting for um, that bad idea server that we created to uh, come up. So I'm creating a discovery client here 
and making sure that the server responds before continuing. And again, a little bit hacky right here is uh, I'm basically just uh, shelling out to customize and cube cuddle right now um, to apply the CRDs that are uh, defined uh, through the uh, cube builder scaffolding. And then at that point, um, after those resources have been applied, I'm now actually starting up the controller manager um, for the cube builder based uh, controller in this project. Now, I, I just really started kicking the tires on this. Um, I didn't really have a really good um, example to use. Um, so basically I just created a, a very simple bar type within, the, uh, within a foo group for the purposes of this demo. Um, it's just a very simple uh, spec definition. It defines a color and a shape, and uh, for the status, it outputs a path. Um, I'm not actually doing anything with the path right now. Eventually, I'll probably actually create um, an image with the color and the shape and put it somewhere accessible from the server, um, but I'm not actually doing any of that right now. Um, if I actually go into the controller, uh, we can see that all I'm doing in the reconcile right now is I'm getting the request requested resource. I have a couple of to-dos in here to actually do something with them. And then I'm simply just setting the status just to show that um, the resource has been reconciled. Um, so I can go ahead and bring that up right now. And this is going to actually go and uh, spawn up the uh, all of those instances, uh, all of those uh, services that uh, I mentioned, and we're going to see some errors in here. Um, I'm still working out um, some of the intricacies around how to wire all of these things together, especially in the case that uh, we don't have things like services and endpoints. Uh, so I still need to troubleshoot what exactly is still trying to talk to. Um, trying to query the server for uh, services and endpoints to clean that up. Um, but let me go ahead and open up another terminal here. And uh, here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to create a very simple uh, cube config similar to what we generated inside of that application and write that to the disk real quick and export the cube config environment variable so I don't have to keep typing that. And now if I go in here and cube cuddle API resources, um, what I can actually see is now um, I'm talking to uh, this example API server that's running. And the only resources that this server knows about are custom resource definitions, uh, the API services for the registration, and uh, the bars type that I've uh, defined and applied uh, when bringing up the service. And if I go even further, I can uh, cube cuddle explain. <clears throat> explain the bars, and uh, <clears throat> as we saw in the API definition, uh, we have a spec, we have a color, a shape, and the status defines a path. So with that, um, I can go ahead and let's create one of these resources. So here we're defining a very simple bar uh, with the name of test, uh, color blue, and uh, the shape is a circle. <clears throat> we can see that that's been created. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look at that in more detail. And here we can see that it, in fact, has been reconciled and we do have a path defined. Um, but remember, we're not doing anything uh, in the controller to actually instantiate that now. Uh, but it does show that the uh, resource was reconciled and uh, the status was updated for it. So now uh, we see that we have an API server. Um, 
the uh, API aggregation is working uh, to be able to contact the API extension server. And we are able to actually um, create CRD based resources and interact with them. But is that actually persisted? So let me go ahead and kill this service off. And like I said, this is uh, a little bit rough right now. So when I killed it off, etcd isn't quite cleaned up properly. Uh, so that's some that I still need to sort out here. So let's clean up those socket um, files there. And let's go ahead and bring it back up again. And if we are actually persisting this data to etcd, then when I bring this back up, I should expect to see the resources, um, the resource that I just created uh, still there. So let's see if that happens. And we do, we see that resource is actually there. So we've uh, created this minimal embedded API server. Uh, we've, we've wrapped it um, in this example application uh, where we've also defined the CRDs and uh, with one binary, we're able to bring up a system that is persisting data with etcd and uh, can interact with CRD resources. All right, so that means that uh, this is uh, completely ready to use, right? And you should use it in production. I wouldn't go that far yet. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done here. Um, so what exactly is missing? Um, well, the first thing is configurability of pretty much everything. Um, everything from uh, what uh, TLS certificates you wanna use to uh, being able to use an external etcd data source, or uh, even uh, some of the different um, configuration around what ports you wanna to listen to and things like that. Um, also, it's missing kind of what the core, core components uh, that uh, Tim Hawken was talking about, the things that you can't necessarily implement as CRDs, uh, things like namespaces and RBAC. Uh, we're gonna need support for things like config maps to be able to handle leader election for controllers, possibly secrets, um, and I'm sure I'm uh, missing other uh, resources that may be needed in practical application. Uh, also, we're missing uh, the basic admission controllers, things like the uh, namespace lifecycle uh, management to uh, be able to create, you know, ensuring that a namespace exists before you try to create resources on it, things like that. Uh, support for uh, being able to do the defaulting validation and conversion webhooks uh, that are a core part of uh, what really makes uh, the CRD uh, implementation very valuable. And this is likely actually to be the biggest challenge uh, that we have for the project uh, because we're gonna need to implement some type of uh, services implementation to be able to do this. And since we're not uh, implementing all of the core uh, Kubernetes resources like pods, uh, we need a way to be able to route that uh, service request to something that is actually running that webhook. So we need to try to figure out how to handle that type of situation. And then finally, the ability to run uh, all of the non-deployment based components of a non-trivial CRD based application. And I figured something like Cert Manager would be a good um, kind of milestone. Like, can we run all of the bits of Cert Manager outside the actual deployments um, as part of this project? So if you are into bad ideas or otherwise are interested in uh, being able to have an embeddable API server that supports CRDs, um, please reach out via the repositories. And uh, I plan on continuing conversations with the community on how we can improve use of uh, these components uh, for use cases such as this. Thank you very much.